Yo, Pit Monsters, what is up? Today I got this beautiful, these butterflies, they just keep coming through the screen. Today we're going to take a look at this beautiful Black Angus Creekstone American Prime T-Bone. Well, actually, it's a porterhouse, porterhouse steak, look at that. What a beauty. Let's take this thing out of its package. This is a monster at 1.2 kilograms. This beautiful T-bone has a lot of intermuscular fat that makes it look really, really good. The special thing about this steak is that this is a porterhouse steak. This is the king of T-bones. And what makes this the king of T-bones? That's the big section right here. That's the tenderloin and you want to have a big cut of tenderloin. If it's short, like this, it's actually still a T-bone. But if you get a big chunk on it, like so, it's a porterhouse. If you get this section too big, and you get a sinew right here, one of that, that silver skin, that tough stuff that you can't eat, we're not talking about a porterhouse anymore because then it's becoming tough to eat. You don't want that. This one is absolutely perfect all beautiful tenderloin. This is my first American porterhouse, a Black Angus porterhouse from the Creekstone farm. And man, does it look good. I always love to try new steaks. It's so important where your steak comes from. You need to find out how they finish their, their cows. Do they let them run in the pasture? Do they finish them off in the stable on grain? How do they get them so fat and so beautiful and so tasty? You need to figure that stuff out. That's why we're gonna try this one today and see if they do a good job. Now we're gonna be grilling this up on a barbecue and I got a beautiful steak sauce to go with it. We are going to set up our Kamado Joe Classic for direct heat. I want a lot of heat to be roasting our vegetables for our steak sauce. As you can see, I have some leftover big block charcoal in there. We're going to stick our fire starters in, light them up. We'll put our grill grates in position. We'll wait for our fire starters to be fully burned out. And when they're fully burned up and the charcoal is completely lit, we're going to let the barbecue come up to temperature by opening the bottom vent. As we are going to be working on our sauce first, we're going to leave the lid open and put in a pan. Our pan is now hot and we're going to add some oil. I like to use a little bit of sunflower oil for my sauces. To the pan, we're going to add red onions, two garlic cloves, and seven tomatoes. We want the tomatoes, the red onions, and the garlic to blacken because that adds flavor to our sauce. And this is really important because we want steak with a barbecue flavor and blackened is the way to go. Look at all this flavor that we build up. It's crazy. Our tomatoes have blackened, our onions are caramelized, and our garlic has turned garlic. Arr, garlic has turned soft. Now we're going to put this in our blender. Carefully, you don't want to waste anything. Come on, get in there. Now we're going to grind this fine. And we want this to turn into a nice and really, really soft puree. Let's take a closer look. Ooh, look at that. That looks really, really good. Now, of course, this doesn't have much flavor other than tomatoes, garlics, and onion, but now we're going to add our secret ingredients. Secret! Secrets! Portler alert. One of the secret ingredients is Mr. Lee Perkins' sauce. He's been working on this for a long time. We're going to add a tablespoon of that. Now Pitmaster X's own favorite secret ingredient. If you know what this is, comment down below. We're going to need three tablespoons of this. And four tablespoons oak barrel aged vinegar. Three pinches of salt. Now we're going to mix that all up and perform the oh so important taste test. Ooh, it's good, but it needs a little something. It definitely needs more heat. Time to get our Uma Thurman. As you can see, Uma is not doing all that great here at the barn. She's uh, either in need of a little TLC or we're just gonna rip her and take all of her fruits. It's been a little bit too wet, too dry, a little bit of all of it too much couldn't handle it. It's, it's like a, a Dutch pepper plant. Oh well, we got three good peppers out of her. So we're just gonna wash these off, put them in the blender and let them spice up our sauce. 
There it is. There she is. Hello, Uma. <laughs> oh, I'm still not really happy. I'm getting tomatoes. I'm getting the onion. I'm getting garlic. It's really good. Maybe a little bit more salt, but mainly I need more acidity to balance out our steak. So I'm going to add our isusu. I never get this right. Yusu sap. There we go. Yusu juice from the yusu plant. And it's almost like lime, but better. So we're going to take two tablespoons of that. Whoa, this is perfect. Now we're going to bow, bow, bleh, boo. <laughs> now we're going to boil this down to good consistency, a little bit thicker. So it's going back in our hot pan, and we're going to let it simmer until it's done. I'm getting my sauce faction. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah. This sauce ain't for chickens. <laughs> Morrison, tell the chicken it's a steak sauce. Whoa, look at that. I'm so happy with how this sauce turned out. I'm just gonna set this aside, let it cool down a bit while we are going to work on our steak. Since we got ourselves the big thick steak, we're going to set up our Kamada Joe Classic for indirect heat. So I got my heat deflector. I'm gonna place that in the grill. Careful now, don't burn your fingers. Ouch. Put the grill right back in and set the grill for a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna close the top vent to the first stripe and the bottom vent to two fingers open. Showtime, time to put this thing over indirect heat. There we go. Look at this beauty. I got the fat side toward the heat that will protect it from radiation heat. Our steak has reached the desired temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. Look at this beauty. At this point, we can eat it, it's fully cooked. But of course, we want to add flavor by adding that crust. First, we're going to let it rest, let it cool down a little bit, and then we're going to work on that crust. Look at this beauty. Ooh -wee. Now we want to have a maximum amount of direct drilling surface. So I'm taking out this heat deflector, setting it aside, and tuning our grill to the highest heat possible. You can see that we've got almost like a red pinkish color. Normally we get a little bit of that uh, mahogany red color and that's much darker than this is. You can clearly see that you get a lighter color if you start off with a lighter color meat. Now it's showtime, Morrison. You ready for this? Since we're grilling our steak over direct heat on a grill grate, we want to keep moving it around as much as possible so we don't get too much flare-ups. We want a nice crust, but we don't want the fat to burn too. When we've got a good crust, we're going to place it on the board. Look at that, what a beauty. Time to get old faithful Beta Loco out. I'm super excited about this. And I want to figure out what that tenderloin looks like. Ooh, look at it. It's falling off the bone. There we go. Whoa, look at it. Look at how tender this is. Whoa, nice and bouncy. Oh, this is gonna be so tasty. I can't wait. And now our strip loin. Let's go. It's falling off too. Look at what a beautiful cut. And there's our tea. Let's slice up these two steaks. Look at how juicy they are. Fantastic. The meat is a lot wider than expected on the inside. Even though we cooked it to 54 degrees Celsius. Now we'll start slicing into our tenderloin. Oh yeah. Super, super tender. It's so crazy, it looks way overcooked, but it isn't. It's just the wider meat that we've got. Now we're gonna sprinkle on a little bit of salt. Now let's first try our strip loin. There we go. Mm. Oh, mm. I expected it to be a little drier and tougher, but that's the thing. We started out with such a white looking meat and it actually is nice and tender. And we got a beautiful crust too. Mm. You give it a try. You see? Wow. Tender, right? And this is the least tender part of this steak. So I got good hopes for our tenderloin part. There we go. That is melt in your mouth good. I love it. Tender wise, tenderness wise. I don't know, what did you do with these animals? 
They're so tender. But now let's talk about flavor. Because even though this steak is super, super tender, the flavor is not very strong. You don't get that rich beefiness flavor. But I, I kind of don't mind. It's kind of like sometimes you have these really strong, dry aged steaks. Sometimes you have these really fat, marbled finished steaks that are, I don't know, strong and rich in flavor with the deep beef flavors. And sometimes you get these grass, obviously grass fed steaks which are really lean, but you get this real nice cow moo grass flavor. This doesn't have that. This doesn't have a real pronounced flavor. But at the same time, it's freaking awesome. It's freaking tender. So still, it's a good steak. Now let's try it with our steak sauce because the steak sauce is amazing. The steak is amazing. Let's try. Mm, that's it. From now on, I'm bringing my own steak sauce to these steak restaurants. This was kind of an exciting steak to review. You got the Black Angus breed and they try to finish it off to perfection. We're missing a little bit of that, uh, I don't know, the heavy cow flavor, but you get so much in return for that tenderness. That porterhouse steak, it's a real treat. And if you haven't had it before, make sure you give it a try. And I hope you enjoyed the recipe video. And if you did, then leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons. You guys freaking rock. Of course, the YouTube members freaking rock as well. Looking for the recipe, by the way. Just go down below to the Discord channel, become a member of YouTube and become a Patreon, and uh, you will get this recipe written down, especially for you. See you guys next time. Until then, it's Magelijk and keep on grilling. <laughs> it's a steak sauce. Get out of here. Damn chicken. They think it's chicken sauce.